If this is your first game by From Software, then you've got a lot of learning to do. And if you've been playing From Souls games for the last six years, then you've got a lot of learning to forget. We're all really beginners here, because while Bloodborne might feel familiar, you can't play it the same way you played the Souls games, so whether you're new to these games or not, I hope you find something here to help you. To start, let's talk about the UI. The red bar is your health bar, as it's always been, and it's always worth keeping an eye on. Whenever you take damage, there's a couple seconds afterwards where you can regain your health if you strike your enemy. The amount you can potentially earn back is signified by the light orange after the white mark. It should take you a couple of hits to get this health back, and remember, even if an enemy dies, if you continue to attack, you can still get a little bit more health back for a moment. This regain system ties into the way that you should be playing Bloodborne. Most enemies are easy to stagger, depending on your weapon and depending on their size, and if you can hit them before they hit you again, take that chance. The green bar below the health bar is your stamina, and it's consumed by most elements of your movement. Attacking, dodging, running, all of it uses stamina, and while it regenerates quickly, you should be aware of when you have none left. Below the stamina bar are your blood vials, seen here, and your quicksilver bullets, seen here. These are the two most important parts of your inventory. Blood vials are your manual healing, and are consumed with triangle. Bullets are used while your gun is in your left hand by pressing L2. Guns in this game aren't primarily used for damage, they're used to stun enemies. And if you shoot an enemy right before it hits you, you can stagger it and go in for the critical attack by tapping R1. To their right is the item you currently have selected for quick access. You'll want to put your most often used consumables here, like Molotov cocktails, throwing knives or pebbles. By pressing down on the D-pad, you can toggle between the ones you have selected, and you can use square to throw them or use them. To put different items on this bar, you press the options button and you go down to the six boxes at the bottom. Another method for quick access is your personal effects bar. By clicking in the right side of the touchpad, you pull up this bar that's best used for not consumable items, but items you use regularly, like a summoning bell or the hunter's mark. While we're in options, the row above your quick item bar is the attire you're wearing, and above that are your weapons. The two boxes on the left in the second row are what you can access with your right hand, and the two boxes on the right in the second row are what you can access with your left hand. Once you're in-game, you can switch what's in each hand by pressing left or right on the D-pad. At the top of the options menu, we have your inventory, your player status, and your settings. Player status shows the details of your particular character. You'll mostly come to this screen to check your stats, which are in the bottom left. Vitality determines how much HP you have, Endurance determines the length of your green stamina bar, plus your resistances to things like poison or physical damage. Strength and skill relate to how much damage your heavy or light weapons do, respectively. Blood Tinge relates to your guns, and Arcane determines the damage you do with elemental weapons or items. We level up by investing in these skills using our Blood Echoes. At the top right of the screen we have our Blood Echoes, which are the currency in Bloodborne. We gain Blood Echoes from killing our enemies, and we lose them all when we die. Sometimes, if you died to an enemy, they will become infused with your Blood Echoes, and will have to kill them to get them back. Alternatively, your Echoes could just be left behind at your point of death. You have one chance to get your Echoes back after you die, and after that, they're gone forever. Below your Echoes is your Insight counter. Insight is consumed whenever you want to initiate multiplayer, and allows us to better perceive the world around us. You gather it most commonly from encountering bosses, but you can also acquire it by consuming the item Madman's Knowledge. With more insight, you start seeing things. And as soon as you have one insight point, the doll in the hunter's dream will come to life. Every time you invest your blood echoes in one skill, you gain one level. And every time you level, the next level will cost more echoes. But while your stats matter, what matters more is your skill at playing the game. A good player can get through most of this game without even leveling up at all, so be sure to invest in your own skills as much as your stats. So we've talked about how to heal yourself, and how to assign items, and how to level up. Now let's talk about how to fight. In your right hand, you hold a transformable weapon, called a trick weapon. In your left, you'll likely hold a weapon that consumes quicksilver bullets. 
The shoulder buttons of your controller are devoted entirely to the weapons in your hands. R1 is your standard attack with your right hand weapon, and pressing it continuously will allow you to perform a combo. R2 is your heavy attack, and many weapons allow you to hold down R2 to charge your attack and do even more damage. If you sneak up behind an enemy and charge R2 fully to strike them, you will do a lot of damage and it will allow you to initiate a critical backstab attack. If you tap forward on the left control stick at the same time you press R2, you'll do a jumping attack, which is really good for closing the distance. There are so many different moves you can do, and you want to learn what each of these moves looks like, because different attacks are perfect for different situations. If I'm in a narrow corridor, I want to use a stab attack. I don't want to hit the walls. If I'm fighting multiple enemies, I want to do a horizontal swing. You have to know your weapon's moveset like the back of your hand, because it determines how you play. Pressing L1 transforms the weapon you hold in your right hand, and every weapon I've found so far has a transformable state. For example, take the threaded cane. Its standard form is a short sword. Its R1s in this form are a simple swipe, and its R2s are a simple stab. When I tap L1, however, I transform the weapon into a completely different form. Now it splits open and becomes a whip. The whip's R1 is a fast horizontal slash, and its R2 is a slower, wider, more powerful cleave. If you attack with R1 or R2, then immediately press L1, then you'll do a transforming attack. For example, I attack with this sword with R1, then I tap L1, initiating a transforming attack. My character puts his sword into the hammer and simultaneously slams the hammer down. The weapon is now transformed into a hammer, and I did it all without breaking the flow of combat. Pressing L2 will fire the gun you have in your left hand, unless you have a trick weapon that forces you to put your gun away. Uh, for example, the Kirk hammer has to be wielded with two hands, so L2 doesn't fire your gun. Instead, it does a huge wide sweep with the hammer, so be aware of that, because you just got a new move. Most guns don't exist primarily to do damage. The ones you get at the start of the game, the pistol and the blunderbuss, they exist to stun enemies. If you stun an enemy just before they strike you, you'll knock them to their knees and be able to initiate a riposte for huge damage by going up to them and tapping R1. Every shot consumes a quicksilver bullet. If you run out of bullets, you can actually sacrifice health for five temporary quicksilver bullets by pressing up on the D-pad. This red number cannot exceed five. I recommend healing yourself with triangle after you sacrifice this health. It's a good way to convert blood vials into bullets, if you have too many blood vials. Moving to the right side of the controller, triangle is your dedicated healing button, as I've mentioned. Pressing square allows you to use whatever you've got assigned to your quick bar, for example throwing a Molotov cocktail. X is what you use to interact with the environment whenever a prompt shows up, and circle is incredibly important, because it's your dodge button. If you hold your dodge button down, you'll start to sprint and consume stamina that way. You lock onto enemies by pressing down on the right analog stick, and you toggle between enemies by pushing a direction on the right analog stick. While locked on, you revolve around that enemy, and all your attacks will go towards it. Also, while locked on, your dodge is a quick dash, and while you're playing unlocked, your dodge is a roll. As soon as you press the dodge button, there's this one or two frames where you're invincible, so if you press it at the exact moment an attack would hit you, it won't. Alternatively, you can just dodge out of the range of the enemy's attack. The melee combat in Bloodborne has so much depth. I mean, just think about all the different melee combinations you can do now. Each weapon has like four consecutive R1 swipes, you have a regular R2 attack and a charge R2 attack, you have jumping attacks, running attacks, post dodge attacks, backstep attacks which are now completely new, not to mention you can now press L1 and do an attack that unlocks a whole new moveset where all the buttons do different things and sometimes you can press L2 to do an attack as well. There is ridiculous depth to the melee combat system now, and it will take you a long time to master even one weapon. So this is why I recommend to have one or two transformable weapons that you revolve your character around. You get to know the weapon, you stick with it for a while, and you become better that way. This game is very much about learning from your mistakes. If an enemy kills you, you gotta think about what you could have done better, and do it better next time. Every enemy has a weakness. For example, the Brick Troll is very easy to riposte. Be patient, learn the timings of his attacks, and shoot him just before he strikes you. Some enemies have terrible range, so extend your weapon and keep your distance. 
Some enemies are weak to fire, so use those Molotov cocktails. Aim to learn something every time you die, and come back stronger. Push a little further each run, and when you succeed you'll know that that success was all you. If you need help, you can summon other players into your world. Once you acquire one insight point, you'll find the beckoning bell in the hunter's dream. This item can be used to host a multiplayer session and draw other players into your world who are looking to help you. Drawing another player into your world uses up an insight point, so use these sessions wisely. You get that insight point back if you successfully defeat the boss with your assistant. To set up a private co-op match with a password, go to Settings, Network, and Password Matching. Both of you must set the same password. To quit co-op, use the silencing blank item to be alone once more. For competitive multiplayer, you need to have found the Sinister Resonant Bell, and apparently, your insight level has to be 30 or more. I don't currently have footage of this because it's recorded before release, but as I understand, you'll be able to invade other people's games to defeat them and earn rewards. For the most part, I think it's a good idea to try and go through the world solo, because you can't invite everyone into your game limitlessly like you used to. When you play, you gotta constantly be on the lookout for shortcuts, you gotta check windows for NPCs, and also check on doors to see if you can knock on them to talk to someone. Check every nook and cranny for items to help you, and most importantly, keep an eye out for messengers lanterns. When you light one of these, it serves as a checkpoint that you can use to go to and from the hunter's dream. The Hunter's Dream is your hub world, containing headstones that transport you to different areas of the overworld, and many things that make your adventures into the overworld easier. When you come here, you should aim to have a lot of blood echoes to spend. You can either level up at Dol, or purchase items from the messengers at the bath. But unless you absolutely need an item, like Molotov cocktails or health files or bullets, you should be investing your blood echoes at Dol because no one can take away your investment in your own character, but consumables are just that, they're consumable. You should only buy consumables when you're having a difficult time with some sections. For example, if there's an enemy weak to fire, then grab a few Molotov cocktails. If there's a huge lumbering enemy you're having trouble with, it's almost certain that shooting him and reposting him is the best way to take him out, so buy some bullets. If you find yourself with 20 bullets or 20 blood vials, which is the maximum, I seriously recommend storing them in the storage cabinet. The more you replay a section, the less items enemies will drop. And if you're seriously stuck, and you keep killing the same enemies over and over again, those enemies won't drop blood vials and bullets, and that section of the game will become even harder. So, when you're having an easy time, save these important consumables for your difficult times to come. At the upgrade table next to the fireplace, you can socket your weapons with gemstones that you find in the world, you can upgrade it with bloodstones which will make it plus one, plus two and so on, making it deal more damage, or you can repair it if it takes too much damage out in the world. I recommend you spend your bloodstones and your sockets on a weapon that you really like. Don't use them sparingly. And that's the simple version of most of the things that I think you need to know about this game. For specifics, as I play more of the game and learn about it, you should check out my dream guide where I'm going to take you through everything and try and help you with difficult parts and bosses and allow you guys to talk about your experiences as well. But thanks for watching and welcome to Bloodborne.